everybody. How are we doing tonight? My name's Esther. Um, I'm going to be your guest host tonight. Flo needed to take a break from comedy, um, so she got someone in the exact same demographic as her to, to host. Um, I, uh, I don't really know how I'm going to warm you guys up. You, got, you guys feeling warm? It's chilly out there. Are you guys feeling warm? Yes. Uh, yeah? What's, what's got you feeling warm today, inside and outside? Uh, nothing really. I just said that. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so you're a liar? You're a fucking liar? Uh, I just don't think before I speak. All right. Okay, so that's what we're doing at this mic. We're just going in willy-nilly. Okay. That's fine. How long am I supposed to usually vamp, Flo? Uh, <laughs> until the... Until it smells right. Until it smells right? Mm-hmm. Keep, keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm getting the signal to stretch. Yeah, that smells right. All right, everybody. You can tell from that stench that it's time for our first comic. Oh um... So, uh, coming up to the stage, one of my favorite comics in the scene. Um, I don't have anything pivy to say. We'll see if I get any steam going. Give it up for Grace Moyer. Yeah. Give it up for Esther. The Woo. mic is not on. Woo. The mic isn't even on. You're oh, so the, okay. I know. I need to just Good be thing, louder. Here. How do I make it be on? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Let's go, Esther. Um, how's it? How's everyone feeling tonight? Great. Yeah. Any any gay here? Yes. Yeah. I also gay. By choice. You know, like like when a Republican says sexuality is a choice. So you know that they're bi and choosing straight. You know, I'm just like them. Uh, I still have straight thoughts, I just don't act on them. That's a sin. And you guys have heard my jokes before. So um, let's do some new ones I'm working on. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm bi, uh, I'm a unicorn. But not like the kind that has um, threesomes with ugly couples from Tinder. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm a unicorn because I'm bi and I live in Richmond, but I'm not Polly. Um, yeah, I'm not like I'm not like monogamous either. I'm just like a good old fashioned slut, you know. Like, I have commitment issues. I'm afraid of intimacy. It doesn't need to be like a whole part of my identity. That's cool. Um, <laughs> thanks Esther for warming up the crowd for me. <laughs> uh, um, boy music. Uh, I hate men. I don't listen to boy music. Um, anytime I hear a song by a man, I just feel like he's trying to trick me. And I'm not gonna fall for it. You know, like, um, like a common theme I notice, they're always talking about like, they're always trying to make women feel beautiful. But like, for me, it, it never seems to work. You know, it's like, it's like the five cutest boys in the world. They're like, you're insecure. That's why you're beautiful. And that seems weird, you know? There's Adam Levine talking about like, lurking outside of some girl's house every day trying to make her feel beautiful. I don't know. I think it pissed off at like the Bruno Mars song, Just The Way You Are, where it's like, he says, don't even bother asking if you look okay. Cause you know, I'll say all this bullshit about how you're like so amazing just the way you are. And it's like, that wasn't the fucking question. You know, are these the right shoes? Is there lipstick on my teeth? You know? Um, that's cool. I feel like, uh, I don't know. There's something there, maybe. Uh, it's, the boy song that I like is the one, um, the 2009 uh, smash hit replay. Because at one point in the song he says, that girl is the gun to my holster. 
And it's like, I just think it's really cool that like in 2009, everyone and their parents were like walking around singing a song about getting pegged. <laughs> you know? She's the gun, he's the holster. Um, uh, <laughs> we're getting loose tonight, this is loose. Um, I recently saw something about how uh, there's like, um, airlines are talking about weighing people and their luggage and giving you like a total sum, which is like, it is fucked up, but for me personally, I'm kind of like, you're telling me if I'm skinny enough, I get to bring more clothes? That's my dream. Um, <laughs> these are just thoughts at this point. There was another thought that I wanted to try out that I am trying to remember now. Um, oh, uh, politics. I don't like making political jokes um, aside from like, I, like, I think it would be cool if um, Trump died, but like, I also don't want someone named JD to be president. Because it's like, as an adult, why are you going by two initials? You know, grow up. I don't even like. I don't even sleep with guys who go by two initials because they're too douchey. You know, what's your name, DJ? That's not a person. That's a job. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll come up with other things that initial names can be. I don't know, maybe. That seemed to be the one thing I said tonight that you guys sort of reacted to. So, um, I'm so happy I um, was here. Uh, thanks, guys. Let's get Esther up here. Guys. All right, everybody, that's right. Let's give it up for Grace Moyer again. She is an Ollie, she is Grace. Uh, she is beauty, she is Grace. She is Grace, she is Grace, she is Grace. All right, um, I was told I'm supposed to warm you guys up a little bit more, because um, I guess I didn't fucking do that to start us off. Um, I've met most of you, but for those of you who don't know me very well, I'll just give a little bit of context about myself. So I'm. I'm a Jewish trans woman, which is not unusual for a host of this show. Um, and um, I, you know, I felt like I had to address that elephant in the room, which coincidentally, you know, I, being a trans woman with a big dick means there's always an elephant in the room. Um, and, you know, for a while I struggled to come out because my major signifier was, was being Jewish. But conveniently, I, I became trans just as optics got really, really bad for Jews. So right now, trans is my big thing. Um, <laughs> It's my big claim to fame, and I mean, you know, I, it's not, not, you know, Jews' fault for the bad press, I mean, our PR team's fucking us, you've seen them, they got the logo on the flag, um, and uh, they've been really, uh, you know, they've been really bombing recently, you know, Jews have been really bombing in the press recently. <laughs> <clears throat> um, just like me. Um, so, uh... Anyway, I think, are, are, are we feeling a little warmer, everybody? Are we feeling a little warmer? <laughs> Is it getting toastier in here? Is that just me? All right, um, well, I think it's time to bring up our next comic. I haven't met him, but I'm sure you guys are gonna love him. Let's bring up Zuri. Yeah. Test, test. Yo, what's going on, y'all? How y'all doing today? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got some good news. I just say 15% or more by switching a single. <laughs> Hell yeah, I ain't gotta spend money on dates no more. Fuck that girl. Anyway, moving on. What y'all do for a living out here? Someone out there career with me. What you do for a living? I'm a nail tech. You're a nail tech? There we go. You like being a nail tech? I know. There we go. Retired. You're retired? <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah, right. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I do many trades. I got plenty of jobs. Man of many ways of work. I do insurance and I do personal training. You know, people get mad at you about insurance when their premiums go up. Yeah, like it's your fucking fault. Like you want to got an accident, don't blame me because you made a claim. 
Look at y'all. Anyway, moving on. Joke number 88. <laughs> I get mad at being late places. Anybody ever get mad when they late somewhere? One person late. That's what I'm talking about. At least he's honest. One person late. Room full of liars. I know y'all been late. I be late. It don't even be my fucking fault, man. Why we gotta wait for the ducks to cross the street? Yeah, you see it. That's why I was late. I had to wait for the duck to cross the street. It wasn't just one duck. It was another duck. Then another duck. And then the whole duck dynasty crossed the street. And that's why I was late for work. Moving on. Joke 88. Again. <laughs> why do we gotta wait for funeral possessions? Why they get to run red lights? What's the rush? <laughs> Y'all already dead. He ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't. Take your time, bro. <laughs> Joke 90. <laughs> what did the left butt cheek say to the right butt cheek? What? Together, we can stop this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's getting hot up in here, ain't it? <laughs> Monday Night Raw. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. Yeah. Wrestling still come on. Monday Night Raw. We're not gonna go. No, that means we got like billions of dollars. There's somebody watch this shit. Come on, man. Where else you gonna see somebody get hit with a table out of and a chair in the WWE? Moving on. Joke 100. People with certain names don't live long. Yeah, y'all looking at me crazy. What you mean by that? People with certain names don't live long. If your name is Daquan, Raekwon, Saquon, you ain't gonna be, you ain't gonna live long with a name like that. Man. She know what I'm talking about. You wanna, you wanna live long? You need an old name, like Silver Rights name, like Thurgood, Martin, <laughs> Marshall, some shit like that, man. My grandpa, his name old as hell. His name Orville. It don't get no older than that. He about to sell some popcorn, goddamn. Joke 105. <laughs> Anybody here go to the gym? Whoa. No. Man, y'all need to go to the gym, man. Gym lit, man. Bunch of women in there with tights on and shit trying to get attention. Some girls just go to the gym, don't do no work. I just take a picture and post it online. Yeah, I worked out. Got to the gym, ain't do shit. Just posted the picture. Well, I made it. I hate people that go to the gym and stare at other people when they working out. Ain't that the creepiest shit in the world? I tell my homeboy, hey man, you're about to go to the weight room. He's like, I know what the weight room is. I'm like, nah, I ain't telling you because you don't know. I'm telling you because I don't want you to get kicked out again for standing up with them girls, man. You look creepy, man. You look like a creep by association with another creep. Ain't that messed up? We got this read two movie going on at the gym. One girl going to the front desk, that guy looking at me. Whole another set of girls going to the front desk. Yeah, that guy looking at me too. And I was training. Moving on. Joke 120. Speaking of the gym. <laughs> I used to work at a gym called American Family Fitness. I used to be in charge of monitoring the senior basketball game. The senior basketball game. Whole bunch of old dudes running up and down the court with them bad knees. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You know they had bad knees, they was wearing them ace bandages. You know how bad your knees gotta be into you with an ace bandage? All right, let me paint a picture for y'all. I seen a porno movie one time, and it was an old guy and a young girl. And the old guy had on ace bandages. You know how bad your knees gotta be in for you to put on ace bandages before you have sex? You just in the mood with your girl, hey baby. I'm faded, feeling x ray It's Mr. Nasty time. About to tear that ass up. But before I do, look at that bottom drawer over there having my ace bandages. You know I got no bad knees. All right, y'all, I'm out. This is my time. Yep. It's good being here at Underground Comedy, or whatever this place is called. Y'all a good looking crowd. Now look like y'all got y'all PhDs. Yeah, a bunch of poor, hopeless, desperate people in this crowd, y'all. Yeah. Good night. Peace. Yeah.
Very good. Yeah, thank you, Zuri. Thank you. All right, let's give it up for Zuri again, everybody. Let's give it up for Zuri. Oh, man. Uh, you know, uh, uh, trans women similarly pick old lady names so that they can uh, they can project longevity onto you know their lifetimes, which usually you know cut tragically short. I'm keeping it light tonight, guys. Um, uh, I'm just gonna rattle off a couple of trans lady names and also my grandmother's real name, and you're gonna guess which one is my grandmother. Uh, two of them are easy. We got Esther, we got Florence, we have Jane, Midge, Jeanette, and Adelaide. Which one of those is my grandmother? <laughs> Midge. Wrong. Ah. Adelaide. Also wrong. <laughs> Jeanette. There we go. Third time's the charm. It's a comedy show. Rule of threes. We're all hacks. So Moving on. All right. This next comic. Uh, this next comic. They have one name. That's the second time that's happened tonight. Um, <laughs> please, please give it up for Roz. Yeah. Also, their comedy's great. <laughs> God, I hate when you're close friends with the person hosting the open mic because they don't feel like they need to introduce you. Um, hi, I'm Roz. I know this half of the room. Well, I don't know you. What's your name? I am Sam. Hi, Sam. Are you going up tonight? Yes. You are? Okay. I was going to say bold choice to be here just for fun. Looking at you two in the back. Uh, I, uh, I have some things that I would like to talk about, but first of all, um, James, you don't wear underwear when you try on jeans? What? Well, that was the punchline to the joke, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we're keeping up with continuity here. Yeah, yeah. no, um, I actually had an ex uh, who uh, usually wears underwear, and there was one time where uh, he was like, I, I, I wanna buy jeans, and I was like, well, let's go shopping for jeans, and we had plans, it was in my calendar, <laughs> jeans shopping with this person, um, and we go and we find a bunch of jeans and we go to the dressing room and he's like, I didn't wear underwear. And unfortunately, that wasn't when I ended the relationship. Um, <laughs> it was far later. Thank you, Sibet. Um, one other person here who dates men. Uh, let me just get like a real quick read of the room we got going on. Can you raise your hand? Or if you want, you could like laugh or clap or look like you're alive. Uh, who here has children, human children? Anyone? One, two. Okay, excellent, excellent. And who here has a pet? Woo! Yeah? Four. Okay. That's right, you have a lot of cats, Sibet. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm great. Four cats is great. <laughs> Perfect amount. What if you have five, though? Is that too much? No, you better. <laughs> I love knowing where your head's at. Um, I, uh, I I feel like there's a lot of controversy about people comparing having pets to having human children. I feel like that's something that people get upset about, specifically the people with children. They get mad when you call your pet like a fur baby. You know, that's my child, that's my baby. Because there's a big difference between raising a human and raising an animal. Um, at, do you just say hell no? No, I say I've had them both. Oh, you've had them both, and what was worse for you? No, I love them both. Oh, but you know, there's one of them that's like, it's the human kids, right? Like they kind of suck. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. No, I, I feel like um, I'm always shocked when people who have pets treat them like humans because the beautiful thing about pets is that you don't have to raise them to be like functioning members of society, you know. Like, you can verbally harass them all that you like. You can bully the shit out of them. Like, they don't care, they don't speak English, you know? Mm -hmm. I had a friend who got really upset whenever I came over and called her dog a little fat baby. She got really upset about it. She was like, that's really rude, you know, don't bully her. And I'm like, your dog can't speak English. And also has no uh, experience with fat phobias. So like, what are we upset about here, you know? You can do whatever you want. I've, uh, I've done both pet sitting and babysitting. Blake, if you leave, I'm gonna be so mad. No, no, no. Okay, good, you're getting closer, awesome. Look me right in the eyes while I tell this brand new joke. Um, I, uh, I, I feel like when you're pet sitting versus babysitting, there's very different standards of care, you know? Like when I pet sit, there's always this really long list, right, there's paragraphs of directions. Uh, I once had a dog who anytime I, I was preparing a meal for it, I would have to boil bone broth and then pour it over their food and then grate fresh Parmesan cheese on top of their dinner. And then people I'm babysitting for, they're just like, here's the key, 
don't kill my child, I'll see you in six hours, you know? Very different, very different. Oh, I love this. I love no one looking at me at all while I'm on the microphone. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave y'all with this one. I assume my timing is running a little thin. Is it? Is it? Shit, I'll keep talking up here for hours, honey. Um, I, uh, I, I think in Richmond, very obviously, we live in a political bubble here in the city. I think the last election really showed that one off for a lot of us. Um, but I went up to Maine shortly before the election, and it was really wild being like in an area that was like very openly conservative. Um, because up there, like, forget Trump signs, forget Trump billboards, right? People were painting the front of their houses with fuck shit. I'm serious. I'm completely serious. There was one house, and and in order to not uh, slander, I'm going to read the direct quote of what was painted on the front of it. Um, Whitneyville Town Selectman Nathan Pennell is a convicted ACDC faggot. <laughs> LGBTQFs, Fs? <laughs> I'm not even caught up at this point. Um, LGBTQFs are the evil genetic mutations that have evolved from evil ACDC male homosexuals. First of all, fucked up to give ACDC all the credit, okay? Queen's definitely high up there. Um, but I think the most atrocious part about all of this is that they misspelled faggot. That's fucked up. They spelled it with an E. It, it's messed up. If you're going to be painting something in huge font on the front of your house, at least use a spell check. Um, all right. Well, that's been my time. Uh, I hope you guys wake up at some point tonight. Uh, thank you so much. Let's get Esther back up here. All right, keep clapping it up for Roz. Mon and him, let's clap it up for Roz. All right, keep it going. Everybody awake? Yeah. I'm going to keep asking, because if there's anything someone who's not okay wants, it's for someone to keep asking if they're okay. Okay, are we okay? Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. I have an anxious attachment style. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. 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 Yeah! That's what the fuck I'm talking about. All right. All right. Oh. We're underground, but every uh, laughs here are above board. Okay. <laughs> or, no, help me. Or, help me all right, our next comic coming up. Uh, he's not Chuck Uncle, because he's Chuck Nephew. Woo! <laughs> That's right. Chuck Nephew, everybody. Keep clapping until he grabs the mic. Keep clapping. And. Good job, everybody. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Ah, I appreciate the intro. Uh, I've been labeled as the raunchy comedian in Richmond. <laughs> I only been doing it for about six months now. And now I got that title on me. Because I say the word pussy a lot. Uh, anybody offended by the word pussy? Yes, I am. Uh, I'd rather say pussy than coochie, though. You feel me, though? Let, come on, man. Let's debate right now, man. The word coochie just sound drag. Coochie. You feel what I'm saying? It sounds like a piece of sandpaper. Coochie. But pussy? Pussy. It sounds like it need to be wet, right? When I even say pussy, it sounds like I'm building a, a puddle of spit. Like, pussy. You feel me? I don't understand why females be getting offended when I say the word pussy. I don't understand, man. I don't understand. But they hate when I say that. I'm glad y'all don't hate it. <laughs> yeah, you ever been so poor, you had to, um, Use the same bath water as your cousins and them. Yeah, he feel me. He like, mm. I'm telling you, that booty water ain't nothing, ain't nothing to play with, mate. 
We all trying to fight for the first spot of the water. <laughs> now nobody want to be the last person with that booty water now. Now you washing your face with the booty water? That's why my face was all bumpy and shit back then, man. I washing my face with that booty water, man. Like, fuck that shit, man. Hey, I'm tired of this shit. I had to fight for the first spot. Fuck that. Ain't nobody want to be last, man. Now we all outside smelling like the dumpster juice and shit. Dumpster juice. <laughs> for real, man. Everybody trying to be first, man. I said, man, fuck that. Okay, what else we got? Um, if y'all ever want to get y'all feelings hurt, just talk to a kid. Kids will hurt your feelings, people. Kids are so blunt. They so blunt. My son seen me take my shirt off. He said, "Ew." Ew, Dad. Then he see my stretch marks. He's like, "I, I can't stretch you, Dad." I'm like, "Boy, man, go in the room, man. God damn." I've been losing weight, man. I've been losing weight. That's why I got the stretch marks. I've been losing weight, man. Ain't nothing wrong with those stretch marks. My wife, she got a gap in her mouth. So, like I said, kids so blind. My son seen her mouth. She, he said, oh, mama told me. Like, I said, boy, go in the room. Go. Go. These kids don't be playing, man. You ever want to get your feelings hurt? Talk to a kid. I'm trying to tell you. Anybody shop at Audi? Yeah. I love Audi, man. I feel like that's where all the homeless people should go. Because you know you gotta put a quarter in the in a in the shopping cart to get the cart. What? Man, I steal the quarters every time I go in there. Like, I don't need no shopping cart. I just be in the pocket like, hey ma'am, you need your shopping cart, take it back, I got you, I got you. I just start rolling that bitch back myself, like, yeah, that's a free quarter for me. I came up, I came up off of two dollars and twenty-five cents one day. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I feel like shy girls are the are the freakiest girls. Shy girls are the freakiest girls, fellas. I'm trying to tell you. Go, I'm telling you, behind closed doors, man, they turn into Caesar off of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> I'm telling you, fellas, they be. <laughs> Like, God damn, baby, she be all on the ceiling. I be like, oh, what the fuck? I be just sweating like, damn. Then they, you know they be shy because they start pulling down their dress like, hey. <laughs> man, chill out, man. I love shy girls, though. I love them. Uh, okay. Any BCU students in here tonight? Good. I fucking hate BCU students. I hate them, man. Cause they don't give a damn about your time, man. They don't give a damn about what you got going on. When I be driving and shit, they want to walk all slow and shit. I'm like, God damn, go, go. Then they be like, then when I take off, that's when they want to start walking. I'm like, God damn, which one you gonna do? Come on now. They don't give a damn about your life, I swear. Uh, I'm gonna get up out of here though. Um, how much time I got? Uh, uh, you got. Do I got a couple seconds. You got negative six seconds. Yeah. Okay, so let me get up out of here then. <laughs> Shit, I'm Chuck Nephew. Y'all catch me up on wow. Funny Bone December 5th. Uh, <laughs> All right, keep giving it up for Chuck Nephew, everybody. Yeah. Let's keep clapping. Let's keep it. Oh, God. You know, my favorite. Warm. Not tepid, it's warm. That's right, that's a bath you can slip right into. Chuck said that uh, shy girls are the freakiest, and obviously I'm not that much of a wallflower, so <laughs> I'm pretty awful in bed. All right, guys, it's about that time again. It's about some. Uh, it's about time for uh, uh, some Hail Mary crowd work. Hail Mary crowd work, we're gonna try to get you guys engaged again. So um, we're gonna do some, uh, some classic crowd work. Um, we're gonna start with a completely disengaged bar over here, and we'll work our way over here. All right, uh, hi sir, how's it going tonight? Good. Yeah, you doing good? Yeah. What do you do for work? Uh, I do murals and art, graphic design. Murals and art, graphic design? All right. Hello there, what do you do for work? I'm a nail tech. A nail tech? Well, you don't say. Excuse me, sir. Oh, hey. What do you do for work? <laughs> well, I work on the computer. 
Wow, fascinating. Those motherfuckers are Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. All right, all right. And you, sir, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm a lawyer. You're a lawyer? How the fuck did you end up here? Bad life decisions. Bad life decisions? Are you at least funny? Or are you just corrupt? That's subjective, but I am corrupt. Okay, that's good. So you're making a lot of money. All right, fascinating. All right. And uh, you, you ma'am, what do you do for work? I'm a cashier at CVS. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's give it up. All right, everybody, let's give it up for cashiers at CVS. All right, so um, I want to get a vote really quick. We'll vote by applause. So um, for those of you who are listening, and I'll, I'll run back through them, we have Guy Who Does Murals and a variety of other things. I know it ended with graphic design, and I'm forgetting the middle thing. We have a nail tech, we have a computer job, we have a lawyer and a cashier. Now, by applause, which is the saddest job? All right, we're going to start with murals. No, art is essential. Okay, moving on. Nail tech. Awesome. Wow. Hey, you don't want to treat yourself every so often? All right, computer guy. Okay, okay. I think, I think, I think computer guy might have it. All right, lawyer. Yeah? Come on, guys. Yeah, I get it, you know. All right, and we got CVS cashier. Come on. Oh, I was expecting a sweep on CVS cashier, but... I guess our winner tonight is computer. So if we learn nothing from this stand-up open mic, uh, don't get a computer job, or an open mic crowd will think you're so sad. All right, guys, you know who's not so sad is our next comedian. Next comedian coming to the stage, the very funny Prashantha Dell. Clap it up for Prashantha Dell. Give it up for Esther, everyone. Let's fucking go. Give it up for Esther. What's up, baby? How y'all doing in Panima? In Panima, how y'all doing? You know? Also, um... Wait! They don't love me like I love you. Just wanted to do that for a while. Uh, I recently got to know about that song, I like it. I'm learning a lot living in Richmond, you know. Uh, Rich, uh, Richmond is very liberal, very forward thinking, I love that. Uh, recently from one of the comics, I got to know, research shows that men's G-spot is in their anus. Ha! Yeah, it's true. I'm like, how did they conduct that research? I want to know. Because I tried to find mine, but I keep shitting myself. I think I'm hitting the shit spot. Where the G-spot at? You know, I'm still looking for it. Also, uh, do you all know Jubilee? Yeah. Jubilee? Oh, you know Jubilee? For people who don't know what Jubilee is, it's a YouTube channel where people from opposing views come together and have a debate. Like, Republicans versus Democrats, Ben Sweat activists versus feminists. I'm like, I've heard all this shit, y'all. I've heard all this shit. I want to hear something new. I want to hear something new. Let's bring Tom and Jerry to the table. <laughs> They've been going at it for a while. I want to hear what they have to say. You know? Just thoughts I have. Uh, oh, uh, like I said, I'm learning a lot. Like, do you know strip clubs have return forms? Exactly. Strip clubs have return forms for their service. I got to know this by the one and only world star hip hop. <laughs> you know? I don't think people appreciate media, you know? I wanna have media that covers the streets and the sheets. That's real media. And that's world star hip hop. That's only over here. That's only over here, you know? Like, imagine a media company that's covering the news while also telling you which only only fans model to subscribe to. That's media, y'all. Okay, it's all right. Uh, recently, uh, I got to experience the American healthcare system, y'all. Y'all don't know. So sorry. I know, right? Like I got I got COVID yesterday. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I got COVID a few weeks back and um, I went to the online medic doctor. I have insurance through my work. 
So I was like, all right, that's cool. I went to the online medic, I opened my laptop, the doctor popped up, and he was like, hey, what's up? I said, hey, I'm not doing well. He's like, what happened? I was like, I have COVID. All right, cool. Here, pick up the prescription from, a, from the pharmacy and fucked off. Five minutes, five minutes, I paid $150 for five minutes. See, when I went to a strip club and paid 150 for a lap dance, at least she made me feel something. Oh, not a strip club crowd, it's all right. <laughs> it's, you guys are too young for that. They were not a health insurance crowd. Oh, uh, that's yeah. why you go to strip club a lot. No. Okay, gotcha, never mind, never mind. Uh, let's do some crowd work. Uh, how was everybody's <laughs> night going? Yeah, uh, you look happy. How is your night going? Uh, what did you What did you say you do? Uh, like art. Art. Well, what made you get into it? You just liked it. Cool. That's enough from you. How about you? Uh, you You've been. You've been. Um, I'm sorry. What's your name? Sorry. Rena? Hi, Rena. Do you go to VCU? No, I just live here. You just live here? Are you a native? Yeah. How long have you lived here? It's like 25 years. What's the most racist shit you've seen? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. We can unload it right now. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm Jewish. I, people used to throw pennies at me. Oh, it's not a good time for y'all. Shit, right? Yeah, you gotta change that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you gotta change that. All right, y'all, that's my time. My name is Bashan Fadil. Give it up for the lovely Esther. All right, you heard it here first, guys. Jews, they gotta change that. Uh, all right, all right. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling toastier by the second. Feel toastier by the second. I know you don't agree, but we'll get you there. We'll get you there. We're all in this together. Um, you know the song. Um, you know, I was, uh, I was thinking, I was thinking about what Prashant said. Let me get my shit together. About um, the G spot being in the male asshole, or uh, some some women. Um, and um, I just, you know, I really get, I was really getting depressed the other day because I was thinking like, what if. You know, what if some sorry son of a bitch finds out that he, you know, where his G-spot is at the exact moment that he finds out he has prostate cancer? Oh. You know? Because finally, 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 you can really come, but only to God. Um, oh my God. Exactly. <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> amen, everybody. Oh, amen is, is uh, who has a G-spot in their asshole? Uh, no fans of homonyms? Okay. Okay, guys. Huh. All right. So um, we're going to do a little more crowd work. Um, so what sort of murals do you draw? What are your subjects? <laughs> All different types. Would you ever... This might sound crazy, but would, would you ever do a mural about computer guy's job? Yeah. Please. Yeah, yes! Yeah, that's right. We got the champion of the downtrodden over here. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's give it up for supporting uh, computers through the arts. All right, everybody give it up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, this next guy, um, you know, uh, he's not Lewis Carroll, uh, but his comedy is going to take you through the looking glass. Everybody, everybody, please, please welcome the very closely named Louis Carroll. Woo! We're all people Nima. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, Reyna. Uh, you said uh, you used to throw pennies at you? Yeah. That is fucking wild. I know, right? That is ho holy shit. You know what I would do? I would like collect them and put them in a sock. I collected them, but it's because I was young and happy. I was like, this is free money. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I need a weapon. Hunt them down, just one by one. Oh, oh they're little brats. I know, I just, they, they dissolve it. They're racist little brats. You are. Um, yeah. So we're gonna be yeah. loose, pretty loose, super loose, loose, yeah. loose, open. Yeah, it's loose 
Let it loose. Falling out. Prolapse. Let it drip out. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh. How do you guys feel about hotels? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah. I always think hotels are disgusting because people, people have sex on the sheets. Mm. And I'm like, cool, I'm, I'm on a porn set. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I really like porn music. How neat. I look at the sheets, I'm just like, oh, it's not the sheets they use. Wow. Amazing. Where's the dildo exhibit? Loose. Very loose. Um, how do you guys feel about uh, school shootings? Well, overall negative. <laughs> what? Uh, all right, next, I guess. <laughs> um, when I found out about school shootings, I was like, I'm glad I didn't go to school here. I'm not really good on camera. I'm a little camera shy. I'm scared, I'm scared. Uh, what else do I have? Mm. How do you guys feel about those uh, slot machines? It's like you know the gambling things? Love them. Love them? Sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I like slot machines. They babysit old people. They do babysit old people. Mm. So I'm not really from here. And the good thing about not really being uh, from here is that you can pretend that you know you don't know things even though you do, like uh, like snow angels. If I see somebody making a snow angel, I'm just like, <laughs> they fell down and couldn't get up. Feel like a crab. Like a crab. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how do you guys feel about boomerangs? No video about boomerangs. Alright. I would hate to get killed by a boomerang. Like, how do you not see a weapon shaped like a sock? It is shaped like a sock. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think how kangaroos get killed by boomerangs. It's like, they box. They box. They're the only animals that can box. Just catch the boomerang. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you guys know the phrase, uh, deja vu? <laughs> I think like a shitty detective like the phrase deja vu. Could you imagine you go to the crime scene and it's like, oh, I've seen this before. <laughs> oh really? Where? Oh, no clue. Because when you ask like uh, deja vu, it's like when you ask somebody like, uh, oh, he fucked it up, whatever. <laughs> um, you guys know the phrase, uh, I got your nose. <laughs> what? Say it again. I got your nose. <laughs> I like when people say I got your nose because uh, I can really dig into the insecurities. Insecurities? Insecurities. Yeah. Wait, hold on a second. You are saying nose? Yeah, yeah, nose. Okay, cool. Alright, cool. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I like when people say I got what? your nose because I can really like dig into the insecurities. I can't say that. But uh, yeah. I can just go, I got your nose. I'm going to get a life. <laughs> <laughs> How about you get anything other than a substance abuse problem? Yeah. <laughs> How about you get to that daughter you haven't spoken to in uh, years? How about you stop stealing noses? <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys feel about bombs? <laughs> I think all bombs are terrible except for TNT. I mean, you've seen the handle, it looks like a pogo stick. It looks stupid. <laughs> Could you imagine meeting like a mustache twirling villain and they're just like, oh, you're never gonna follow my plan. It's like, is that a bicycle pop? <laughs> Are you gonna blow the rails? How about you blow me a balloon? <laughs> <laughs> TNT is such a stupid word. What does it mean? That's not threatening? <laughs> I don't try next time. Uh, 
And I love the common comedians that come here. Yeah. That's a beautiful speech. Yeah. Please don't no, turn my set anymore. It's a reality. All right, shut the fuck up. Okay, no. Um, now that I've enlightened the, enlightened the mood, <laughs> anybody have any comments or questions? <laughs> Should I do some crowd work? What law do you practice? Uh, I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, uh, that's the most boring question. I'm the in house lawyer. Oh, shut the fuck up. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> That, that, was, that was the right reaction. An like in-house lawyer means I'm the lawyer for a company. Ew. So I do like the company's legal work. Which company? It's a company nobody's ever heard of. It's called G2 Web Services. Which house? Oh, oh, computer guys? <laughs> yeah, actually, the computer guys at my company make more money than me. Yeah. That's, so, and my job is sadder, so you, you guys were wrong. The, the computer guy's less sad than me. But good question, and good reaction. That was the right reaction. Um, all right, I think that's my time. Have a good night. Thank you for having me. Sorry, man. Please don't kick my ass. Thank you. Of course. All right, everybody. Keep giving it up for Sam Zabon. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. All right. Uh, unlike a sex club, uh, open mics will let in single men any old time. Single anybody. You know, man, woman, or they. Okay, I'm progressive. Um... <laughs> Our next comic is similarly progressive. Uh, please welcome to the stage my my friend and yours, Zach Carpenter. Thanks. Uh, yes, it's me. I'm Zach, and uh, I'm an addict. Oh shit! This is the wrong basement. Uh, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, uh, I just got out of rehab again for the second time in six months. Um, I, uh, I'm a frequent flyer. I'm, uh, I'm trying to break the record. Uh, they got a special lounge for me there where they give me extra trazodones. It's nice. They keep me calm. Um, I, um, when I got out, it was my cousin's engagement party and shit. They had a nice spread of food there, right? And uh, my cousins were all trying to take care of me. They're like, hey, man, you know, I hope you're feeling all right. You know, if you need anything, just let me know. And I was like, yeah, as long as there's no crack cocaine at this party, I think I'll be okay. But these meatballs are pretty close. Uh, so that was my bid for the night, um, but to be honest, nothing comes close to the sweet taste of crack, so, yeah, uh, this is gonna be rough. Um, I, uh, I, my drug, my drug problem got pretty bad, you know, it was like to the point where they were like, sir, somebody was like, sir, Zach, you can't live here anymore. Zach, you can't live here anymore. And then someone else was like, hey, Zach, you can't live here anymore either. And then one day somebody was like, Sir, you can't park your car and live here anymore either. <laughs> so this shit got pretty bad for me and I had to go spend a few months uh, away somewhere. Um, but while I was there, some guy was talking about how he used to cook crack and he would put purple food coloring in it and he was like, this is a special batch of crack called Grimace. <laughs> Hell yeah. I was like, all right, as in the McDonald's character. And I was like, dude, give me some of that. I'm trying to become a menace. All right. Um, that was bad. One time somebody asked me why I like cocaine so much and I was like, have you ever gotten a blowjob before? It's kind of like that. It's like getting a blowjob up your nostrils every 15 minutes. Sweet. Um, I wrote this one uh, while I was in there. I think, I hope it's good. Um, I like my neighbors like I like my cigars. Black and mild as opposed to black and wild because I don't like their music. Um, and then I asked the black guy that was in there if that was racist and he said, yeah. Um, but he said it was funny and then he dapped me up and called me whitey and I missed, so. That's how that went. Um, Speaking of cigar smokers, I don't know, you always hear like people like complain about vapes and like they're always like the cigar smokers and cigarette smokers are always like, oh, what's that fucking wonderful smell? I wish someone was burning leaves and tar instead. 
And it's just like, all right, I don't know, that one, that one's not going anywhere. I haven't really found anything for that yet. Um, I'm gonna go back to the drugs material real quick. I was doing, I like to, I used to do a lot of meth, and I, like I still have all my teeth. Um, so I always wonder if like other like meth heads look at me and it's like, is this our messiah? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna steer off of that for a second. I uh, I like I'm all depressed and shit because I fucked up my life and stuff, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm all like like so I'm super like unmotivated. Like I'm like I'm like suicidally depressed and shit, but like like not like. Like, I'm, like, looking up, like, how to, like, tie a noose and shit, but I, like, get to the video, it's, like, 13 minutes long. What the fuck? I don't got time for that shit. That's not even adding in the time that I gotta, like, pause and, like, try to actually tie the bitch, you know? So, like, what the fuck? I don't got time for that shit. Oh. So I'm gonna try and find another clean, easy cleanup way, you know? Uh... I, um, I don't know, I was talking to my therapist, I'm like, you know, maybe I need some fucking responsibility or something, you know, like, maybe I should have a kid or something, or be a father, and she was like, that's a bad idea, you know, you were literally just talking to me about how bad you want to smoke crack, like, this entire session, so, don't have a kid with anybody, you're not father material, um, that's pretty much all I got for tonight. I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm running out of steam up here. So that's my light anyway. So thanks. I've been Zach. Uh, peace out. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's keep giving it up for Zach Carpenter, everybody. Oh, that's right. He got sober, but he cracked the code to comedy. Okay. Oh, didn't I tell you he was progressive? Didn't I tell you this was going to be a great show? Didn't I? Don't I love lying? All right. All right, everybody. All right. Uh, this next comment coming up to the stage. Oh, oh, what a treat. What a treat. This stinky little sausage is the best worst. That's right. He's the muscle from Brussels. It's his last night on earth. Please, everybody, give the warmest possible welcome to Sam Nelson. Yeah, oh. yeah my cock stinks. <laughs> it's a condition. Yo, you people better get more lively up here. Don't think I didn't notice, okay? Flo hosts this every single week. But when a Jewish trans woman hosts it... <laughs> yeah, you thought I wouldn't fucking catch on? This is... <laughs> Silver, I like the jacket. Where'd you get it? The jackets that are a great color store? We have the same color jacket. That's that whole joke. Thanks, everybody. I'm Sam. I've been Sam now, so let's get your... <laughs> okay, uh, I've been working on this one. Let me know what you think. Peekaboo! 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 I gotta stop workshopping shit with babies. It sucks. <laughs> cool. Um... You guys know that uh, there are those, like, women? <laughs> and, yeah. There are those yeah. women, and uh, they don't know that they're pregnant yet, but their Instagram algorithm, like, monitors their data so closely and, like, tracks their searches and everything. So it'll start recommending them pregnancy products before they themselves even know that they're, that they're pregnant. Um, my Instagram ads are uh, a little bit different. Uh, I yet to get pregnant. Um, I get ads for these like wizard cloaks, <laughs> and uh, they're specially designed. You know, they're like weighted so that they like hug and like press down on the user, uh, and they're made of a special material that's like soft, so it doesn't like overload uh, the sensory uh, facilities of the wearer. Um, and I don't know what the fuck that's about, but uh, I can't wait to cast lightning spells. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um, uh, I'm really good at phrenology. I'm the one, one of the best at phrenology. Uh, I've got a real knack for it. The skull science, the skull bumps. 
I can feel anybody's skull. <laughs> oh, so oh, so now we don't like phrenology. <laughs> Leave it to the woke left to cancel phrenology, folks. <laughs> I'm a real um, phrenology genius, as I was saying before I was rudely heckled. <laughs> But I can only derive one thing. I put my hands on their skull and I feel the bumps and I go, ooh, Jedi. <laughs> and then I'm back at square one. Okay. <laughs> posters in classrooms. I love the way that kids learn different things. I love that they learn things through posters. Save the drama for your llama. I don't know if you've seen this one. Very classic, excellent lesson. Don't be a freak, just be normal. There's one that I don't like so much. Uh, it's, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Amen. I gotta say, Deborah, it was a terrible way to learn my grandpa was a pussy. <laughs> he fell. <laughs> I like playgrounds. Ross, don't say anything this time. Look, I know it sounds weird, but I like playgrounds. Me and my three-year-old friend, we love playground. Um, <laughs> his name's Charlie. He's a great guy. Um, I love playgrounds. I love seeing how kids uh, interact on playgrounds. And then you can see kind of which has, like, the more cutting-edge mind. Because they'll be playing Power Rangers, right? And then you see one of them go, laser beam. And then the other one goes, <laughs> force field. And then you can tell that this guy is on some other shit, right? Because he goes, <laughs> you're not going to believe what my laser can go through. <laughs> uh, I guess I got the light. What's going on? Uh, should, what, what do you want, like, uh, like a throat fucking joke or something? <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. Yes! Yes! Throat fucking check. Oh, wait, no. Okay. <laughs> I think that the alien movies are especially terrifying. And the reason I think that they're so scary is because they dare to ask the question, what if a bug fucked a boy in the throat? I forgot my slide whistle again today. I have a kazoo. I might try that out after that as a little, like, a little yeah. pick-me-up. Just let me know. Uh, let's get our wonderful host up here, Esther Bilderback. Yeah. Oh. All right, give it up for Sam Nelson. Give it up for Sam Nelson, everybody. One more day left on Earth. He's dying tomorrow. It's by my hand. Oh, all right, how are we feeling tonight? Ipanema, are we feeling loose? Are we feeling warm? You in the back, who's vocal? Are you feeling warm? I'm feeling uh, relatively loose. You're feeling relatively loose? Yeah. All right, let's get some poppers right in you. Okay, this, this next comic. Yes, sir. Also, just uh, any comic that is uh, wants a drink, there's an open tab for that. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, a hundred bucks. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, let's give it a, uh, give up a round of applause for the hero of our audience tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I'm rescinding every snarky comment that I'm thinking, that, but this next comic, this next comic is going to be a shot of loose. All right, all right. Um, an excellent host. An excellent spouse and the poppers that we need. Please, everybody, give a very warm round of applause to Cade Wonders. Keep it going for Esther. How you doing, Sam? I'm good. You good? Is this your first time doing this? Yeah, this is my first time at the slide. Oh, bad. Good job, dude. That's fun, that's fun. You say you work for, he doesn't want to talk to me, he's on his phone. You work at for G2 Web Services? Yes. Is it like B2B site? Yes, it is. Fuck, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I know what it is. Yep. Sorry. Oh, really? Are you a client of ours? No, not at all. Okay. But, like, I'm familiar. It's very boring. Cool. But it's okay. Yeah, you agree? Yeah. I like that. I like that. That's nice. Guy that opened the hydraulic tab, what's your job? Oh, I am. Uh, I recently got uh, fired from Lillian, and I'm uh, actually moving to California to work for the U.S. Postal Service. Oh, fuck I'm yeah, flying dude. out on Thanksgiving. What, what, fuck what yeah. the fuck? You said, oh. let's spend that money. 
That's fun. Uh, buy no money? Yeah. Yeah, hundred dollars, baby. Read the comics. We've met before. I don't I don't remember anyone I've met in my entire life. Great. I'm sorry, I thought you were an excellent bartender at that point. I'm not a bartender. No, that's yeah, there we go, I get it. Cool, this is going see this is how you do crowd work by getting absolutely nothing from anyone. Yeah. And then you jump off a bridge. Sorry, I'm a stupid that's right. wedding style, baby. What's up? I'm a stupid dipshit. No, you hey, no, dude, this is not your fault. It's my fault. Okay. <laughs> but you are transphobic, just kidding. No, you're not. <laughs> You see, you tell a joke, and when you know it's not going to land, you have to immediately pull back and second-guess everything. Right. So this right. is really cool. Uh, you guys know the book The Secret? Yeah. yeah. Are we familiar? Do you guys like know it's like manifesting and shit like that? I recently listened to... I like to listen to podcasts. Surprise. So I do it at my computer job. I was listening to the podcast that was like telling me more about what it actually talked about. And it's just like vibes, dude. It's like, you just gotta put vibes out there. Like if the secret were to like talk about the 2024 election, it would just be a vibe shift, you know? Like Trump coming into office, vibe shift. They also say like, hey, you're fat, you wanna lose weight? Just stop thinking fat thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> you're poor, you don't wanna be poor, stop thinking poor thoughts. And I feel like the author's just telling me not to eat McDonald's anymore. You know? Yeah, yeah, we like that. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, tra let's, we're gonna talk about being trans. That's the rest of the set. Hi, trans. Let's go. Yeah. I I feel like as a, as a yeah hell yeah we got some support from the non comics. I like that. And me. And you, hey, listen, <laughs> comics aren't people. We all know that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> me, not real. Um, anyway, I feel like as a this little little trans trans dude that I am, I feel like I'm the one good man. And I feel like an asshole saying that, but like it is true. Like you know, like you're on your period. What you need a tampon or a pad? I got you. Oh, you had a bad day. You want to tell me about it? Cool. I won't interrupt you to offer solutions. I'll interrupt you because I'm rude. Yeah. I uh, the first time. So we're coming up on like three years since I um, had a top surgery, which is where I got my ten pounds of titty meat cut off for eight thousand dollars. That's my backstory. Thank you. I know, dude. I got a whole joke about it. It's fucking wild. <laughs> we don't have time for that tonight. I uh, no, but uh, it was it was goofy because shortly after that was like the first time that I was ever like read as just like a dude by this random guy. That so my car broke down side of the road. It's nighttime. Ooh, spooky, scary. I call AAA because I don't have an extra battery in my trunk. <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> Um, not a real man, am I right? Real men have 18 car batteries at all times. Uh, but no, he shows up and like I can like kind of immediately tell that he just like sees me as just like this little this little dude on the side of the road that needs help. And I'm like, all right, cool, pro, the surgery worked. Con, this man is about to talk to me as if I'm just another dude, <laughs> which. Ladies is a terrifying prospect. <laughs> so I just go like NPC mode, where like you just say, my only responses to anything he said was, oh yeah. <laughs> and and uh, oh yeah. Which, good news, is just how men talk to each other. <laughs> It's good, it's good. No, he really, he comes in hot though. He, he hits me almost immediately with, uh, I don't want to remind you all, we were alone on the side of the road. Uh, he, he hits me with, huh, you know about Dominican women? <laughs> <laughs> and I say, oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and then he hits me with the most genuine bitches be yapping I have ever heard. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he decides we're friends. And so then he tells me, I really like musicals. <laughs> Which I can tell he thinks is gay in a bad way. Mm -hmm. But he trusts me, you know? We built this camaraderie on the side of the road. Uh, and then he says, hey, do you know this new one, en Encanto? And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Let's talk about Bruno. <laughs> I'm cutting that. I don't like that. <laughs> but he did, he was very jacked up about it. He was like, hey, I'm like, you really like Latin culture, don't you, bud? 
That's nice. That's nice. Nah, but anyway, the time comes, he's, he's changed my battery. I'm like, thank you so much, sir. His name was like George or Fred or something. <laughs> something simple. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad we like making fun of rednecks who fix our cars for us. At Nathan Carlson. That's inside baseball. Uh, anyway, the time comes to pay, and I'm like, oh, oh no, because I realize that uh, my original God-given, parent-given government name is still on my credit card. Um, and so I get it out, and I'm like, oh no. But I give it to him, because I gotta exchange money for my goods and or services. And he looks at it, and he says, who's Katarina? <laughs> Oh, which, yes, is a bad name to give any child, because that is a porn name. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been in fifth grade computer lab Googling your names, and you just get explicit results. <laughs> this, is, this is 2004, 2005, before the schools know how to censor stuff. Um, anyway, I am like, oh no, oh no, uh, baby's first hate crime is about to happen. Uh, and so I chicken out and I just say, it's my sister. Which is goofy because I'm an only child. Which might shock you all because I'm surprisingly well adjusted for that. But anyway, he's, he's like, whatever. Because like any man, he doesn't want to talk about it. So that was my very fun adventure into pseudo passing. All right, let's give it up for us. We're back up here. Thank you all so much. Uh, let's go. Keep giving it up for Cape Wonders. All right, everybody. Oh, you know, I, I, I know I'm a woman. Um, this isn't necessarily up to code, but all I can think about Kate said is, oh, yeah. Huh. Oh, wow, sorry. no one was listening. Um, all right. Um, this is, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I don't remember what about their set uh, conjured this in my head, but I'm thinking about trying to affect some real change, so I'm going to start a letter writing campaign. I'm going to start a letter writing campaign to the White House. Um, and I'm, I'm heavily inspired by my forebears. My favorite letter writer is, of course, Ted Kaczynski. Um, I think they're going to make a really good splash. That's for fans of mail bombing. Um, but all the men have done pretty well tonight, so we don't know what that looks like. Anyway, this next mail... <laughs> The next male coming to the stage is not going to bomb. No, he is not Ted Kaczynski. No, he's not the Unabomber. He's the single, he's the dua uh, uh, killer. All right, <laughs> please welcome Blake Carlson. <laughs> Thank you, Esther. I'm not the Unabomber. I'm something new. <laughs> Beware. I've got a green jacket on, so who knows? I, um... I, uh... Fuck! I did that at Garden Grove, too. <laughs> I think my pinky just likes buttons, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. I, uh, I once sucked a dick so big it came in my ass. <laughs> oh, I, strong, strong. Um... <laughs> Do you like, uh, do you like true crime, sir? Sorry. Oh, it's all right? Okay. What's, uh, what's, uh, what do you, what's, what do you like? What's all right? I don't watch that much true crime. You don't watch that true crime? What true crime do you, do you watch when you do? Uh, I don't know. I thought that was the name of the show for the longest time. You thought true crime was the name of one show? Yeah. That all these bitches were just talking about? Just like this one... <laughs> It's like, I like true crime. It's like, oh, what episode are you on, you know? <laughs> so what, um, what are you, I mean, true crime is, is you know, obviously closed, cold cases, open cases. Uh, I've been, uh, I've been tuning into the Menendez brothers case, because it's kind of come back into light. Have you heard of the Menendez brothers, sir? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so uh, just to refresh you, so the Menendez brothers, they killed their parents some time ago. Uh, they went to jail for it. Um, and they claim that their, their parents were abusive and they were justified in their murdering of their parents. Um, and now that the, the sort of the case is coming back to light, do you think that they, maybe they were justified in their killing and maybe they should just walk free? What do you think? Or should they stay in jail? Yeah, let them free. Let them free? Hell yeah! You know? Like, I'm not their parents, you know? Like, lightning's not gonna strike twice. 
I, I think we're all safe. I think we're okay, you know? Um, I, think, uh, I think global warming is a lot like uh, modern serial killers, because, like, no one's really taking them that seriously yet. You know, I, I went to the cops the other day, and I was like, global warming is killing insects. And the cop was like, I've done that, you know? And then I went the next week, and I was like, global warming is killing animals, full animals. And the cops were like, it's just a hobby, you know? And then I went the week after that, and I was like, global warming is killing homeless people. And the cop was like, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, I was the uh, I was the victim of a mistaken identity the other day, which uh, which doesn't happen often. I was kind of taken off guard. I was in this toy store. It doesn't matter why, because um, I, I have a disposable income. Okay, and um, they had these like the they had these uh, eighteen inch tall Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action figures. They were pretty cool. But I was there. I was looking at calendars. Um, and this eight-year-old comes up, this eight-year-old comes up and he's like, you see anything cool? And I was like, is this kid hitting on me? What's going on? <laughs> and, um, and then he like, I, I was trying to think of an answer. I was like, there's like a clue, like a Seinfeld clue right there. I think that's pretty cool. And then he sees my face, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then I was like, oh, okay, I get it, you know. Yeah, I, I look like, um, like his brother or his dad or something. And then he walks up to this woman wearing the same exact jacket as I am. And she's got the same, like, um, like baseball hat. And I was wearing my big hoops that day. So I, I understand where the confusion was in my little black purse. Um, I'm just a mother when it comes down to it. Um, I need to find an ending for that, but I like it. I like it. Um, I, uh, ooh-wee. So... <laughs> I don't even know what I'm excited about yet. Yeah, I'm still reading. So I I went uh, bowling this past weekend, which is super cool. I, for fun for me, I don't know. But like my friend, he he was a lefty bowling righty, and he was bowling like he was releasing it back into the wild. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, has your brain ever like pulled the emergency brake before? Yeah. I was, I, so I had to get up for work at like, uh, at 7 a.m. I had my alarm set and I was not waking up. It was on the floor, I couldn't hear it. So my brain conjured this dream where I kissed my mom. And I was like, wake up, <laughs> this is it. I don't know. It was worse than just that. Well, not that, I mean, that's also pretty bad. I love my mom. <laughs> I love her. Um. I feel weird. I don't have kids, so I don't smoke around my kids. But I, I, I do have a porch, and I have a porch plant, and I've started feeling weird smoking around my porch plant. Cause like, I mean, she needs like, she needs oxygen too. She needs it. Um, or she does, she needs, I don't know. I'm a bad plant parent though. Let's see. So I, uh, I've graduated from missionary position. Yeah. It took four years, but I finally did it. Um, feeling adventurous, you know, I've graduated to what I like to call visionary position. It's very similar, you know. Uh, I'm still on top, and she's dressed like Benjamin Franklin. Um, if, and we just wait for lightning to strike. Uh, and then she's like, babe, like, you gotta buy me better pantaloons. These ones are uncomfortable. And I'm like, why would I buy you better pantaloons? Why would I spend the money when I'm just gonna rip them off anyway? Uh, Penny Sam is a penny earned, everybody. Give it up for your host, Esther Bilderberg! Yeah. Thank you. Come on, that's right. Give it up for Blake Carlson, the man who is not the Unabomber, but he fucks Benjamin Franklin. What a rich historical tapestry Blake Carlson paints, everybody. Okay. So before we firmly move on to our next comic, we're almost done, so I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit, um, I'm, I'm just going to try something a little bit new really quick before I get out. Um, it's not fully fleshed out yet, it's just, this is, um, we'll, we'll, you'll see. Okay, so um, so that's what I would do if any of my jokes really killed tonight. <laughs> so, we're gonna keep that energy, keep that energy rolling for our next comic. Wonderful host, wonderful comic, please introduce Nadine Donaghy! <laughs>
Yeah. All right, let's keep it going for Esther. She's doing incredible. Uh, this is fun. Uh, Blake talked about toy stores. Sam did peekaboo. You know, I like kids. I like kids in general. Uh, you know what annoys me about them, though? Is it annoys me that you have to, like, argue with a child to get them into a bath. And then you have to argue with that child to get them out of the bath. I'm like, these should be mutually exclusive fights. You can only argue with me about one of these things. You either want in the bath or you don't. Uh, super funny, right? I wanted to couch your laughter. Even if you're laughing at me bombing, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, kids are fun. I like when people say that's a fun age when they're talking about a kid. I think that's an interesting thing. Uh, my oldest niece is nine. It's a, it's a fun age. She picked out my jewelry for tonight. She put me in pearls and a bracelet that says suck it. <laughs> Which honestly, if you know me, is a pretty good representation. <laughs> I, I, if I was like describing my personality, I'd be like, imagine if Charlotte from Sex and the City was also a stand-up comic. <laughs> Uh, uh, my uh, my younger niece, she's four. That's a fun age. I I took off work the other day to go pick her up from daycare because next year she'll be at actual school, so I can't just go like kidnap her at a whim. Uh, but I did. I went. I picked her up, and I was like, Lori, I've been really missing you. And she goes, Yeah. And I've been missing grandma. <laughs> yeah. Which is uh, the type of honesty that will keep me up at night. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? No one ever says that's a fun age once you get to any age where you have a job. Those are no longer described as fun ages. Uh, I'm 33, and it's a fun age. Woo! Yes. Thank you. I'm yeah. having a good time. Yeah. It is. Yes, it is. My skinny friend's metabolisms have finally slowed down. <laughs> And that has been a real joy to watch. Because <laughs> there's just nothing like someone suddenly getting to bear the burden that you've been carrying since you were like 10. <laughs> it's, oh, it's just so fun. Uh, you guys, it's almost Christmas season. Do we love Christmas? Or like the holidays in general? Um, I, like, I like the season. I love having random basic white men tell me that their favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. <laughs> I always like to confuse them back. I'm like, uh. I'm like, you know, my favorite Christmas movie is The Godfather. And then they're always like, wait, really? And I'm like, no, it's The Grinch, because I'm not dead inside. <laughs> uh, I do. I like Christmas. I like giving presents. Um, I love giving presents in a relationship, because I like to picture in my heart that those gifts then haunt that man once we're no longer together. <laughs> I just, around this time of year, I love to picture, like, my ex's mom hanging up the stocking that I, like, hand-embroidered for him. Uh, He's just like, Mom, what are you doing? And she's just like, you should have treated Nadine better. <laughs> That's how it goes in my head. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I like the idea of haunting people. <laughs> you know what I think is weird? I think it's weird that there are people in this world that are atheists, but believe in ghosts. <laughs> I feel like these people really want to have their cake and eat it too. <sighs> uh, I um I the other day I went to a party and I as I was leaving this guy that I had met there asked me out on a date. And then he texted me the next day and was like, actually I think we're better as friends. Which was like being rejected for a job that I hadn't applied for. <laughs> I was like, what happened to the good old days where no one respected each other or communicated and you just ghosted someone? I was like, can we go back to that? Can you show me the respect of never speaking to me again? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to try. I don't think so. And you guys know all my old stuff. Well, no, there are some people that don't. Um, okay, I'll do one that's one of my favorites for anyone who hasn't heard it. Um, I think that flirting is weird. I, I think that some of the ways that people flirt are weird. To me, the boldest pickup strategy that I've ever seen is when, um, like, it's usually a guy, and he's trying to pick up a girl, and he literally, physically picks her up off the ground, like, lifts her up. 
Uh, I don't know what blows my mind more, the fact that men ever try this or that like it has a pretty respectable success rate. Um, I guess it's because it makes the girl feel skinny, which is apparently right next door to Frisky. I had a guy do this to me once, just like mid-conversation, he picked me up, because I mean, if he had said anything, I would have done the obligatory, I'm too heavy, which is based on real insecurities, but is also just like a backhanded way of me being like, you don't look that strong. <laughs> All right, thanks, you guys have been great. <laughs> All right, keep clapping it up for Nadine Donachi. All right, guys, we got two comics left. Just two comics left. Oh, all right. You know, um, Nadine set got me thinking about my inevitable fall from hubris when my metabolism catches up with me. And you know, much like the Grinch, um, you know, when my metabolism catches up, my heart and the rest of me are gonna go three th grow three sizes that day. Yeah, that was pretty bad. So let's try one of my uh, jokes that's bad on purpose. All right, you guys heard the one about the pansexual top with low self esteem? No? All right, his name's Phil. Knock, knock. Who's there? Phil. Who? Phil who? Anyone who's asking nicely. Okay, that killed the momentum even more. All right, that's awesome, because we have another comic who has to deal with that. All right, everybody, give it up and get warm for the very funny Danny McCabe. Thank you, Esther. Oh my gosh. Save us, Danny. I'll save you guys. I'll save you. I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm here to save. You know. It's it, it, the, the thing is, is that my my superhero name is First Danny. And I, for all these years, I've been some sort of weird, strange, everyday man who transforms into a superhero half-ass which means I don't really transform into a superhero. Because I am, you know? And I've always been the first Danny. But now we have the mayor with the same name as me, and now I'm no longer the first Danny of Richmond. That, that, what the fuck is up with that? Are you a twin? <laughs> no, I'm not. Are you a twin? Yes, I am. Whoa! Whoa. 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 And that's a lie. <laughs> That's how you start that off. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, um, yeah, my, uh, I used to have this group of friends where we had another guy uh, named Danny in there. And, uh, we, you know, when there's always like two of like the same name in a group, like you guys ever experienced this, where you're always trying to find ways to like dignify them, you know, like identify them, right? Um, so the way that they referred to us is Good Danny and Evil Danny. Yeah, I remember that. Do you guys want to know which one I was? Good Danny. No, I was Evil Danny. <laughs> evil Danny. I was Evil Danny. Oh no. Oh yeah, no. I uh, I I uh, yeah, no, I was Evil Danny. So it was um, it was a good time. Uh, no, I just thought it was fun. But um. Yeah, it's not as bad as some things, because, like, there's been other people, not even just friends, but, like, you know, you come up to a bar, like, you know, it's Richmond, it's a small town, we all know each other, and, uh, you know, someone's just like, hey, aren't you the guy who uh, stole Woody in Toy Story? Yeah. Ooh. I think I, uh, I think I figured out a new business venture, guys. It's going to be called, um... Porn for pets. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Like, do you ever think that, like, you know, your pets, your dogs, your cats, maybe you have fish, birds, I don't care. You can have, like, any animal if you want, for you want. But do you think that they, they need that, you know, being domesticated in captivity too, like us? Because we're in this together, you know that, right? All our pets, all our dogs, all our cats. Anything you have? Yeah. I don't know. But uh, basically the idea is is that uh, we started off, like, kind of keep it classy for them, you know. We're going to make, like, porn parodies of classic novels for them. Um, my first idea is called uh, Where the Red Rocket Grows. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Well, uh, if you didn't like that one, you won't like this next one. <laughs> but that's all right, because, <laughs> um, you know, I found out the worst feeling recently. You, uh, you guys ever uh, donate clothes to a thrift store? Yes. Absolutely. You ever uh, go back to that thrift store and your clothes are still there? No. Ooh. No? No. Well, it happened to me. Oh. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was bad. No, yeah, they were bad. The worst part about it is, is like, you know, a uh, person comes up behind you who works there, and yeah. then they say to you, it's like, you find everything okay? And you're like, I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, we'll leave it on that note. Thank you guys so much. I've been Danny McCabe. That didn't just save the energy for the end of the night. I don't know what will. Um, you know, guys, I uh, I also I'm not a superhero personally, but I have a I, I know someone who's a close friend of mine. He's a superhero and he lives within me. Um, and since no one's listening, I think it's the best time to introduce you guys. Um, so this is one of my favorite people. This is one of my favorite people in the world. This is a, a Jewish superhero who can slow down time. And after I slow down this time and all this comic momentum for you, I'm going to bring up our last comic, and we're going to be so fucking generous to our wonderful headliner for the night. But before I do, I need to introduce you to a Jewish superhero who can slow down time. His name's Shlomo. Uh, Hello? It's me. Shlomo. I can, you know, slow down time. So that one's for the fans. That one's just for the fans. That's to really get the momentum fucking cracking. All right. All right, everybody. We're feeling nice and loose. We're feeling nice and limber. So it's time for our headliner. We've been through a long night. No one longer than me. Let's give it up for me and my bravery. Hell yeah. Never hosted before. And oh my God, am I fucking not killing it. But I'm loving every second of it. Okay. My arms look great. I don't care what any of you think. So let's bring up our next and final comedian of the night, Benjamin Brayman! Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. That is, that is so embarrassing. Esther, give her another round of applause. That You are dressed impeccably, and I am wearing the clothing that I got off of work in. I'm wearing, I'm wearing non-slits. It's like if orthopedic shoes could be less cool. <laughs> Oh, this is this is great. I haven't done comedy in like two months because I'm back in school. It is weird. I have a 4.0 GPA. And I guess I'm bragging because like that feels wrong coming out of my mouth. <laughs> like that is a strange thing to say. Like I'm taking like real classes too, like science classes. But things with definite answers, like they ask you, like, what is this muscle and what function does it serve in the body? And they don't want you to make up an answer. Like, the teacher asked me, like, what is the longest muscle in the human body? And I slapped him and said, hey -o! And everyone looked at me and I was like, oh, this is not that type of class. <laughs> what this is, is it? The, the longest muscle? Yeah. Uh, the sartorius. It's in your leg. It like wraps Thank like you. yeah absolutely like Thank you. do you go to trivia nights we love learning. like bar no, I don't but I'm in the medical field I love oh awesome I love yeah the human body I I'm also going into the medical field you awesome. you seem a lot more responsible than I am I'm retired from it oh okay you got out yeah you got out just in time congratulations to you Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, do they actually like like once you take the classes, they like actually let you like near people? I've seen open heart surgery. I've seen brain surgery. I've seen intestinal. I've seen amputation. And that was all this week? Yes. <laughs> oh <laughs> hell yeah! No, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's like actually helping people. I'm yes, like, it is. I work in a bar now, and I feel like I just hurt people. Did you help? No, no, no. I'm working on this. No, I'm, I'm working on this new thing where I just mix salt yeah. into all the drinks. Like, have you ever had a salty banana? 
It's banana liqueur and salt. <laughs> yeah, it's a hot new thing. People are gonna people are gonna start drinking them. Salty bananas. It's it's got potassium, it's got sodium. Your body needs both of those things to live. I'm looking out for people. Yeah. Oh a hero. <laughs> I can't believe I'm sharing this. I am bombing so hard. I'm so sorry you all waited to the end of the night for this nonsense. Oh, um, does anyone think pronouns would still be a debate if we respected English majors in this country? Like, I don't think you could make six figures by asking people what they, them means. Like, that, that bothers me. That is eighth grade grammar, and you have somebody going, I went to Harvard Business School, and I've never heard they, them, and it's like, yo, at least one of those sentences is a lie. Like, one, at bare minimum, one out of those two sets. And why are we attacking English? If we're going to attack an eighth grade class, can we attack math? No one liked math. And it's so easy, too. X, what are, solve for X. Well, X is the last letter in sex. Are we teaching our children about sex? Literally that easy. We could make math controversial. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I'm getting up here to, to apologize. For years, I made fun of the book. Ma'am, did you ever read the book Twilight? I've seen somewhat of the movie. What did you think of the movie? Twilight. <laughs> 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 With that, I really wasn't, to be perfectly honest, I really wasn't into it. I saw it. I saw the advertisement of it, the people that spoke about it, all of it. But in all honesty, my mindset was somewhere else. No, yeah, that's fair. That's I fair. mean, I'm, I'm speaking the truth. Oh, yeah. for sure. I mean, I'm speaking the truth. I'm not going to sit here and tell a lie about something that, oh, well, this and that. that Pattinson that. ain't got it like that. Honestly, no. I'm going to throw this out there. The <laughs> last movie in the Twilight series is fucking rad. The it, la it, end, it ends with a ten-minute scene of every single character in the movie getting brutally murdered. Oh, in boy. gory, extreme oh. detail. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Y'all have a great night, guys. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Let's go! Thank you! Okay, let's keep giving it up for our headliner, Benjamin Brayman, everybody. All right, oh man. Well, I think we can all agree this is really full engagement. Who's not listening? Who's not listening? I'll wait. Any teachers in the audience? I'll wait. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for a wonderfully engaged night. No, no, uh, no hurdles in the way of that. Um, this was my first time hosting. This happened out of nowhere. So thank you very much for being with, here with me for Jesus Christ. Is it two hours? It's already been two hours. I know it felt like the longest of your entire life. And I thank you so much for bearing with me. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. And now we're from China. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got I'm supposed to say this at the end of my set. I'm uh, hosting Kindred Spirit tomorrow. Tomorrow! So come on out. All the coolest, all the coolest 24 and 25 year olds are hosting stuff this week. So lock in. 1626 at Owen B Lane? Did I get it right? Who knows? Yeah, you did. I did. I did. I'm really smart. Um, at 7. Seven. Seven, like maybe you get there at six forty-five. You can get there at six forty-five. I tried to. I'm gonna try to start at seven, like I do every week. I push the mic. All right. Thank you. December 2nd.
Amen. Amen is right. <laughs> it's a holy day. Um, all right, here's my one joke. The owner, I've been wondering a little bit lately. I've been wondering. Where did the word etymology come from? <laughs> Tell me the meaning of it. I'm, that's what I want to know. Let's keep it going for Deborah, everybody. You all have a great night.